Hey guys, Amanda here. Last video, we left you waiting for rain. So here we are on our next forecast rain day. We set up our Bruno time-lapse camera to hopefully capture um, the rain coming in to create perhaps puddles. We waited all day. Here's a little bit of rain coming in. Um, we got a bit of moisture over the swale, nothing um, resembling filling up the swale at all. The rain actually came in later in the day and really started to settle in once it started to get dark. And the rain really started to get quite heavy once the sun went down and we knew that the camera wasn't going to be capturing any of the swale uh, filling up, if it was indeed. So we popped back out during the night with our torches to have a bit of a look around and you can see no water in the swale <laughs> again. Good morning, Corey at Rockpile, how are yous? So we had a bit of rain last night, not sure how much. Uh, I haven't checked the gauge over there yet. But uh, we came out last night in the dark and the rain and thought, oh, maybe our swales filled up, but no, it hadn't. So this is it this morning. Everything's had a um, definitely a good soaking, but no water yet. So what I'm doing this morning is I'm just going to uh, back up to those bales of canola stubble uh, load them into the back of the ute there and basically just put a, a light layer of mulch across the top of these two sorry three berms um, that's my job today we'll see how we go Not sure how it's going to go yet. Uh, just going to cut the strings and hopefully start laying some in the back here. That's my plan. Got to start with a plan. Amanda might come out and I might be under here mulched. <laughs> we are on a bit of a slope here, so I might cut those top two from the other side because I don't want to end up on the ground. And Amanda's putting some bloody clover seeds on me thinking it's a mulch pile. So it almost went to plan. Most important if you've got like, you know, animals or livestock or even just the birds and stuff, make sure you put your if you're not going to use it, either tie it up and hang it up in the shed ready for something else or chuck it in the bin. Alright, let's just start with that. So, why are we doing this? Well, two reasons, our, our two main reasons, uh, is to, maybe three, anyway, I'll just start listing them, uh, is to protect the soil, so this will break down 
quite nice. You can see it's already uh, starting to break down here once it gets wet and kind of starts to rot and stuff. So that'll help uh, protect the soil. It'll also help keep moisture in the soil. Uh, it will protect our seeds from we're worried about birds coming in and pinching the seed because we don't really know much about seeding stuff. So uh, it'll protect the seeds and hopefully help them germinate a bit better. So that's it. I'll go through with the rake after I've done this one. This one, this first berm, we've got three berms. This is number one. And I'll just rake the mulch out a bit so it's kind of like an even layer. Probably, oh, thick as your hand maybe, say a couple of three inches thick, maybe a bit less, maybe two inches thick, 50 mil thick. So I'll just get the little plastic rake and just start from the other end and kind of spread it out a bit even. See, that's one done. Um, I don't know if we're doing the back, the other side of the berm here. Um, hmm, not sure. Might have a chat with uh, number one in charge. She's out work just behind the scenes now, working out the uh, trees. She found a local supplier of trees, of, na of uh, native and, and pioneer trees, uh, acacias and She'll probably do a whole little segment on what she's organised. So they work out at about uh, 80 cents, between 80 cents and a dollar 50 each, roughly, I think. Um, and they're just little seedlings in a tray, come in a tray of 64. Um, as many as you like, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. So that's her plan to organise that, and then we will plant this out with some trees. Uh, we are about the first week and a bit into July at the moment. So we've still got a bit more rain coming and hopefully, I'll tell you what, I'm hanging out to see this thing with water in it. Oh, just hanging out. All that work and all that rain last night and it's just soaked away. I guess that's the, that's what you want. But part of me wants to see, a, you know, a thing full of water. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to move on to the next one now. Uh, this was the longest one. The other two are a bit shorter. And uh, we'll go from there. So I just want to say, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Just got to find something to lean on so I don't get pricked in the backside by this stuff. So as I said, if you're new to our channel, welcome. If you've subscribed, thank you very much. Um, we're trying to start a our own idea of like, you know, permaculture life. Um, it is it is difficult, I guess, when you 
when there's just two of you, you know, Amanda and I, and we got a hundred acres here, and you know, there's not, there's a, a lot of other stuff to do as well. So this is quite a good project that we've managed to do here. We're quite proud of it. Um, if you like it, give it a share or subscribe even. So hopefully there'll be many more of these to come because we have a whole plan for this massive dam that we want to build here and catch all this water that comes off all this land to save it just running away. Um, so I could think of nothing better than just being outside, you know, with a shovel or a rake and a bit of dirt and, you know, even if you don't have machinery, you know, you can still dig, you know, a series of small swales um, just with a shovel by hand. You know, if you get a few mates around and put on a bit of a barbecue lunch or a bit of a cook up or a grill, you know, you get, you get four or five people on a shovel for a half a day for, you know, say three, four hours, three or four hours, um, you'll have a pretty good, good swale system. Mark it out with a simple A-frame. I think swales are really good um, because essentially, I haven't done the calculation, but, you know, you're talking in this one swale alone here, you're talking thousands and thousands of litres of water that potentially is just going to run across the top and just keep going down the hill, end up next door, because next door's uh, paddock kind of flattens out and goes up a bit, so it just ends up going into his dams and through the creek. So why not hold it here? You know, even though we had a bit of rain last night, uh, everything's quite wet. And you can see how this is our soil, so it's really uh, holds its shape, it's quite loamy. Um, we've got that everywhere here. So yeah, why not catch it? And if that's, you know, if last night, if we managed to get, you know, even say a thousand litres caught in there that we obviously can't see, um, but you know, that's another thousand litres of water that's just gone down into the landscape. So, you know, potentially under where I'm standing now. So when we plant these trees along this baseline of this swale here, um, they'll get their roots into the water, into that moist soil, and uh, hopefully thrive. That's the plan. Anyway, enough waffling from me. Let's do some more mulching. Oh, she's going to come pinch the camera. Hang on. So I'm just at the, you know, the driveway crossover bit. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle a light layer of the real fine stuff over the top of that, just to help protect the soil, just to give the clover seeds a bit of a chance to sprout. And I've lost the camera. And protect it from the parrots. And protect from the parrots. We found it this morning. Yes, so Amanda's got a shovel in her hand. I'm going to go get Corey a present for the swale. Present number one, it's a sweet potato slips. Not really the perfect season for them. But they might be happy, tucked up in the mulch. See how they go. This is our secondary driveway, which will become our primary driveway once we finish fixing it up. The main driveway that we're using at the moment uh, was cut in uh, was cut through by the previous property owners and they actually cut across a ridge line and created a new valley so I'll um, uh, I'll go down there and give you a look at what 
damage that has caused uh, with water kind of running down there and not uh, flowing in a more natural manner over the landscape. This is our olive grove. It's looking fantastic. So where I'm off to, <laughs> down this track, I remember seeing a seedling a few months ago now and I'm pretty sure it's an acacia. I mean it's going to get damaged just sitting in a driveway. Here's my little fella and he's still there. Type of acacia and uh, I'm going to see if I can dig him up without damaging, damaging him too much and uh, deliver him to Corey and our swale. This guy's actually a little bit more than a seedling, so I probably need to do like a bigger, bigger dig around, make sure I'm not um, damaging a taproot, and I'll see how I go. Oh, I'm here. So this is that uh, tree that I dug up for Corey. Now, it's not going so well. Still alive been a couple of days the battery died it's been a busy couple of days um, also planted some um, sweet potato slips which was like so not the best time of year the morning after we got massive frost here we go Poor little buggers not happy that's okay I'll just start some more and plant them out when they're supposed to be planted yeah so I told you guys that I would show you the effects of um, when you cut through a ridge and just create like another valley, right? I just want to show you the kind of damage water can do through erosion when you're not thinking sympathetically with the landscape when you're doing your water management. So to give you a bit of a kind of idea of where we're at. That is where our existing swale is. You can see our house over there to the right. And then we've got this big hill uh, that water flows off. Uh, there are a few, quite a few actually, acacias up there. That's mostly granite, out, uh, granite outcrop. There's a track coming down there as well, which has a ditch that has been dug. So it's channeling all the water down been down kind of this area this track here and you can see how it's starting to dig in and erode there and this is what the track looks like All right so we've had a couple of rainy seasons a couple of winter seasons now and summer rainy seasons and the water has been flowing down here virtually uninterrupted. Um, the ridge line did come through from across there. And I mean, it was a, a lesser ridge line. I don't know what they're called. Um, but just to our left here, you can see there's like a whole lot of trees. So there was actually a little valley area that headed off down into the trees there. And that's where the natural water um, runoff was going. The track is kind of sunken in from each side, um, which channels the water inwards and creates more erosion. And you know, you might be asking legitimately, well, why don't you just fix it? Because Earthworks is expensive. And yes, we have an excavator, but an excavator isn't the right machinery to do this kind of work, right? Um, eventually we'd like to delete this track and create another one that goes down the bottom of our property that we can build a crossover on um, at the point that the water exits our, exit our property. The idea is that we reduce the amount of water that is actually exiting our property, which is why we're st starting further up in the landscape, trying to manage it with swales and in the future some ponds, 
I mean, we've been on property for, for years, not a property of this size, but as soon as you get onto a decent amount of land, water management always becomes an issue. And I think even the phrasing like water management can be deceiving in that it makes you think that you need to corral and control the water where really you kind of need to sit back and observe and find solutions that are sympathetic to the landscape and that um, work hand in hand with what the landscape and the water wants to do anyway. Hey folks, I got my camera back after the wife pinched it. So while she was uh, off filming some other stuff, I finished the canola stubble on the swales as our layer of mulch. Looks pretty good, eh? The next step now is to plant some trees. If you like it, subscribe, like, and share. See ya.